And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about winter trees, and they can be very complicated because, again, they're not dense, full foliage like summer or spring. So you have a lot of tiny branches, you see through them to the background details, and it can get very busy looking. But sometimes the more busy or more complicated or harder subjects, you have to simplify. So because of that, they become a little bit easier. Sometimes they're real easy looking paintings. It's hard to make them look interesting. But I find these, well, we've got three or four images here we're looking at. I find them really interesting to paint. They can be hard if you don't simplify them, but being forced to simplify them, I reduce them to simple shapes and it makes it a lot easier to paint. This is a creek near Tucson, Arizona and it was uh, in November, so most of the foliage is gone in all of these images. There's some bright colors in some of the other photos, but um, a lot of bare branches, a lot of looking through the branches and the trunks, and seeing a lot of detail in the background. So first thing I want to do is separate those big areas of the landscape, and I can separate them by sky plane, slanted plane, vertical, flat, or just big dark and light. I have, you know, the obvious is this shape here, then this shape here. That gives me two shapes. Then I have, I want to separate these clumps of trees into background, middle ground, foreground. Uh, sometimes it's just background, foreground. There is no middle ground sometimes. Like this doesn't really have a middle ground. But this one has, this has three layers, uh, two layers of trees, but three layers going back. I got the hill back there. Then I have these background trees back in here. Then I have the foreground trees. So I've got two layers of trees here, background, foreground trees, and then just a background hill. And then the foreground is broken into a simple dark and light. That's how I want to simplify that. And then I want to take the background trees, foreground trees, and simplify it. And usually I, I will have either the foreground in sunlight and the background trees in shadow. Or sometimes I'll have the background trees in sunlight and the foreground trees in shadow. But I want to force it one way or the other. So when I look at this, here obviously these background trees are in shadow. So I'm going to force it all into here as well put all that into shadow, and even make them a little bigger in the background. Because the more dark in the background, the more these sunlit trunks are going to pop out. And that's my goal, is to create interest around the focal point, which is this big cottonwood trunk here, and maybe a couple more of them. So, I made the changes here, and it's a simplification. Everything in the background is this blue and orange, or the equivalent of, I don't know what it is on the computer, but I'm thinking in terms of white and uh, white and blue with orange. It's a cool gray, but not real cool. There's enough orange in there that keeps it from being too cold. But I could push it cooler. I could even make it more violet. You know, maybe a muted violet. But the key is that it's darker and cooler than these foreground trees, which are the white trunks, the yellow, orange, yellow, green foliage. So you can see the background, I've made the background uh, dark shadowed branches bigger. I created more of them around these white trunks to make them stick out more. And you can see I really pulled all these together, made it a lot darker. And again, the key is I'm not painting what I see. I'm taking what I see and creating more interest. And that always means changing, making things darker, lighter, bigger, smaller, whatever it takes to make the focal points stick out. So I know I'm not copying exactly what's there, but trying to make things um, more interesting in the center of interest by pushing the dark and then pushing the light as well. Next one here, this is in the same area. All these are in the same creek. This is a real interesting creek. One of the few creeks in Arizona or southern Arizona that has water running all the time. Uh, same thing here though, and I have, if I pick out layers, and I always want to first do that, the background layer of the hill, background, and I'll probably want to raise this up so I don't have it right on the hill, then the background layer of trees, and then the foreground layer of trees. So including the hill, I have one, two, three layers here. And it, probably that front in there. So separating those areas, again, it gives me four. Now I want to separate those four areas, or planes, with value. 
and I'm going to make the decision to make the first, the background hill, dark. The uh, trees here in the kind of the middle ground, the number two plane, I'm going to make them light and then dark here and then light and then dark. So I'm always playing dark against light to create contrast. So these are the value changes here. Now, I'm not taking into account any softening of edges. Obviously, when you look at the, uh, the original photo, a lot of soft edges between those layers of trees. So all I'm wanting to do is set up a, a plan of dark against light. So a Dark background here, dark background here, lighter, a little bit darker. Not too much value change between those two. But the darker trunks in front against a lighter background. And darker in here against a lighter background. And then dark and light as I move forward. So again, the main thing is just that simplification. Here it looks cluttered. I don't see much separation of background, middle ground. I see it in spots. These dark areas here, light areas here. But to really simplify it and make it work, I need to come up with that. I should probably darken these just a little bit so they're darker than this light back in here. Because they are, for the most part, in shadow. But I want to create as much drama as, as possible. And the drama in front's already there with the cast shadows across the the sand and across the water. I just emphasize it more by making, again, just a more simple dark and light that creates more contrast. Then, um, same thing here. This one's a little more evident. The background trees back in here are light. And then these middle ground trees here are going to be dark. And I'm going to make them bigger in the background. And then the foreground trees, which I'm forcing them more in the foreground here, and this stuff is going to be lighter. So I have one, two, three layers of trees and shrubbery. And then value-wise, you know, I want to keep that middle value dark and the front trees, foreground trees light and the background trees light. So I have that contrast of dark and light that's going to make it work. And here's my separation. Again, everything's dark. And you know, I could probably just use a, a blue and a um, orange, a blue and cad red. Blue and Indian red, which I don't use much at all anymore, but that would make a good, uh, good dark. Just a neutral dark, and the goal is to make these trees in the foreground stick out. And I didn't emphasize these white trunks, which I would. I'd make them pop out a bit more, because again, they just create more contrast. So you can see the shadow falling across the trees here, and these foreground trees really standing out. Getting these background values darker, that's a bit too dark. I would have to tone it down in the painting, but it does give it, it makes those lighter values in the foliage really pop out. And I don't get caught up in all the bare branches, the tiny stuff going on. I mass it together, and um, in this case I just made it more fall foliage. But again, creating that contrast. And these shadows in front, which are already there, really help the composition. I pull the shadow up in front a little bit more to break up that foreground and uh, make that pattern. But this pattern is a lot easier to paint. And the fact that this stays sharper edged helps me draw it better on the canvas, which is what this is for. And I would do this on a thumbnail drawing too. You know, a little four by five inch thumbnail, uh, spending about 10 minutes just getting those layers figured out and the shapes and what basic value they're going to be. No detail whatsoever, just, just value. So when we do these, we want to, again, simplify, create those layers of trees, and pull them together. Big, solid shapes, and as little detail as possible.